Here you see a sample GMAT question involving factors, factorials, and divisibility. It's a little bit of a challenging problem, so go ahead and press pause, give it a try yourself, and then we'll come back and do it together. All right, how'd you do? Well, there are a couple moving parts here, and we need to make sure we're clear on terminology. The first thing is, what does this symbol mean, that exclamation point? It indicates factorial. And so what that means is, let's say the number n, the positive in, uh, integer n, is 5. 5 factorial simply means that you're going to take 5 and then multiply it by each successive smaller integer. And this is useful on combinatorics questions. You can visit my video on probability and combinatorics for more on factorials, but it's important to understand that that's what's going on. So now the question is asking which n factorial is going to be the least one that is divisible by a thousand. What does that mean? That means a thousand can divide into uh, whatever we're talking about. In other words, it is a multiple of a thousand. So the bottom line is it's going to have to be bigger than a thousand, and that's helpful for us to actually eliminate some wrong answer choices, right? The beauty of this question is that the answer choices are sitting there for us, so we can test them, right? n could be 1, n could be 4, n could be 9, and so forth. And so if n is 1, 1 factorial means, right, 1 factorial means 1 times 1, which is just 1. Well, can 1,000 divide into 1? Of course not, because it's not bigger than 1,000. So a is incorrect. Same thing with 4 factorial, right? If we do 4 factorial, it's 4 times 3, which is 12, times 2, which is 24, times 1, which is still 24. It's still smaller than 1,000, so there's no way 1,000 can divide into 24. So it also is going to be too small. Now 9 factorial gets interesting because we have 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and you recognize that this number is going to get very very large. Let me give you a hint. You don't actually want to do this on your scratch paper. You don't have a calculator and this number is going to get too big so there's something else going on. There's a principle at play that we need to that we need to figure out. And same thing certainly if you end up having to test 15 factorial or 30 factorial you're just not going to have enough time on the GMAT to actually write those out to see if they are divisible by a thousand. So what do we do instead? Well the key on these types of questions, these least value types of questions, whether it's a least common multiple or greatest common factor always rests in finding the prime factorization. And I'll talk about this more in a second, but let's go ahead and do the prime factorization of 1,000. Well, it's 2 times 500, right? The bottom line is what we're doing is we're breaking this number 1,000 into its component parts, its building blocks, its prime factors. So that breaks out into 2 times 250. 250 can be broken down into 2 times 125. 2 no longer goes into that, nor does 3. The next prime number is 5, so 5 times 25, and then 25 is 5 times 5. Now why is this important? Because we have just figured out what the building blocks of a thousand are. We have three twos, right, and we have three fives. And so the multiple, the least value, the least multiple must also have the same building blocks. And this is the crucial understanding, right? It must have at least three twos in its factorization, prime factorization, and it must have at least three fives in its prime factorization. It can have other prime factors, but it must have at least those same building blocks. And this is the concept that's important for students to understand, and sometimes it's hard to get your mind around it. And so let me be very clear on this. Um, you don't necessarily have to understand why. You can just memorize what I just said. And you can fast forward another minute or two to the end of this problem if you understand what I just said. If not, let me be clear on this. And let's do some examples. Let's take something simple, for example, like the number 2. Let's assume 2 is our factor. Right? It only has two, uh, one, you know, one prime factor, 2. Right? But look at the multiples of 2. A clear multiple of 2 would be 4. Right? 4 the prime factorization of 4 is 2 times 2. It has at least one 2 in it, right? One building block in it. 
How about the next one, six? Here's what's interesting about six. The prime factors of six are two times three. Ah, it has, we've, we've introduced a new factor. It can have other prime factors as long as it has at least the same number of building blocks as the, the, as the factor we're looking at, right? How about something like 14? 14 is definitely divisible by 2. We know 14 is a multiple of 2, and yet when you look at its factorization, 2 times 7, again, we can have other prime factors as long as we have at least the same number of building blocks as the original, right? And then the same thing goes, I mean, we could look at something like 15. Uh, let's say 15 was our factor and we're wanting to find you know multiples of 15. Well 15 breaks down into 3 times 5, right? So the multiple must have at least 1 3 and 1 5 in it, right? So obviously something like 30. 30 breaks down into 2 times 15 and then 3 times 5. So it has this extra factor, it has a 2 in it, but who cares? Because as long as it has the 3 and as long as it has the 5, it's we know it's going to be a multiple of the original. All right, back to the drawing board. You can rejoin me if you had uh, fast forwarded to this point. <laughs> but the idea is, you know, using some simple examples, kind of this wouldn't it be nice if strategy that I teach you know, we break it down into something that we understand. We understand now that whatever multiple we're talking about must have at least the same building blocks as, as the factor in question. So back to our question, the factor is a thousand, right? So we're trying to find a multiple of a thousand and we know that whatever that is, it must have at least the same basic building blocks, three twos and three fives. So when we move along to nine factorial, what does it have? It has at least one two. Ah, but it has to have three twos, okay? So it has three as a prime factor. Okay, it has four as a factor, right? Because nine factorial literally means nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two. Those are going to be the building blocks to get to 9 factorial. But remember the key is prime factorization. 4 doesn't do us any good, but if we recognize that 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2, that's like the same thing, right? I mean 9 factorial could also be expressed as 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 1. Ah, now what do we have? We have our three building blocks of 2. Now we're going to have more building blocks of 2 because 6 is just 2 times 3. You can have more than just the 3 we need, but that's okay. We already have our 2's. The key here, the limiting factor, is going to be the 5's, right? So we have our three 2's in 9 factorial. Do we have our three 5's as building blocks? No. We have one 5 uh, and no mas, no more, right? There aren't enough fives as building blocks in 9 factorial, so 9 factorial cannot be uh, divisible by 1,000. It simply cannot be because the building blocks of 1,000 will not fit evenly into the building blocks of 9 factorial. So then you would just continue to progress. We're looking for the least value, so the next smallest number of the answer choices left would be 15 factorial. So let's see what that ends up being, right? And the key here is to focus on kind of the limiting factor, which is going to be the fives. So 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 times, you can write this out on your scratch paper, times 10 times, and then I'm not going to rewrite it, 9 factorial essentially. Uh, 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. We already determined that we have plenty of 2's, right? 2's aren't going to be the limiting factor. We're going to easily have 3 2's, right? We already saw that we have 3 2's at least in the 9 factorial part. The key is the 5's. Well, we know in the 9 factorial part we have at least one 5. So there we go. We're good there. But now we also see that 10 breaks down to 2 times 5. So we have another building block. There's two of them. Do we have a 5 as a factor of 11? No. 5 as a factor of 12? No, no, no. Ah, but when we get to 15, 15 is the same thing as 3 times 5. Here's our third building block. So in 15 factorial, sure enough, do we have other factors? Absolutely. We have some 7s, right? 14 is 2 times 7. We have 13s as prime factor itself. You can have more prime factors as long as you have the basic building blocks. And so we saw we have at least three twos, and now we know we at least have three fives as well. 
Sphere 5, 5 here. And so sure enough, 15 factorial will be a multiple of 1,000. And obviously then it's the least, uh, the least multiple, the least um, the smallest value of, of n factorial that's going to be a multiple of a thousand. Now I've seen a version of this question where instead of answer choice C being 9, answer choice C was 10. And, and that's a little bit tricky, right? But the same thing applies. If it's 10 factorial, you know, you're going to have two building blocks of five but not the third. So 10 factorial doesn't quite get you there either. You need all three of those building blocks of five to get there. So I hope this makes sense. I hope it's clear. Again, this little aside should hopefully conceptually explain to you why it is the case that we need those building blocks, kind of explaining this concept of building blocks in simpler numbers that you can get your mind around, right? Multiples of a thousand is hard to get your mind around, but multiples of two is easy. Multiples of 15 is easy. So it proves to us this building block theory of factors the key, of course, the second key is to understand that when we're dealing with these types of questions, you want to find the prime factorization of the numbers in question, and then you simply test the answer choices like I just did here to make sure that we have the same number of building blocks in the multiple. And then the other final thing was just making sure that you understand what a factorial is, uh, which may be a new concept for you, but now you know. It's super easy, and you will see it elsewhere on the GMAT, like I said, in combinations questions. But for now, uh, good job if you had originally gotten answer choice D. If you didn't, hopefully you now understand why the answer choice is D. And more importantly, you'll be able to do these types of questions, which by the way, are considered difficult GMAT questions and get them right in the future so that you may go out and dominate the GMAT.